the Radio Theater brings you Alan Ladd, William Demarest, and Marjorie Reynolds in Salty O'Rourke. Ladies and gentlemen, we're happy again to present our producer, Mr. William Keeley, who gave you such screen hits as Brother Rat, Valley of the Giants, God's Country and the Woman, Torrid Zone, Each Dawn I Die, and many others. Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you on this stage tonight an exciting drama of the racetrack. Paramount screen hit, Salty O'Rourke. Starred in our cast is a gentleman for whom this theater has great affection. Alan Ladd in his original screen role as Salty. Co-starred with Alan is Bill Demarest, also from the screen cast, and Marjorie Reynolds as Barbara Brooks, the girl whose charm and loveliness melt the hearts of two men who supposedly have hearts above the melting point. It's post time, and here's the first act. Starring Alan Ladd as Salty O'Rourke, William Demarest as Smitty, and Marjorie Reynolds as Barbara, with James Cardwell as Johnny Kate. It's a chilly, rainy afternoon in Los Angeles. In a deep, dimly lighted corner of a second-rate cafe, Three men discussed the recent death of a mutual acquaintance. Yes, Salty, it certainly was too bad about your partner. Jackson was a nice fellow. Yeah, I guess somebody must have had it in for him, huh, Salty? Four bullets in his head. Now, you guys didn't follow me to L.A. to cry over Jackson. No. You owe me $20,000. Oh, now, wait a minute. Jackson borrowed that dough from you, not me. That's right. And then he skipped town. I never even saw the money. Jackson was your partner. What he does, you're responsible for, see? That's what the law says, and I say I want my dough. Or, uh, else. Something like that, yeah. Well, I'm broke. Give me a little time. Suppose I say no. No, you know better than that. The dead men can't pay off. Okay, I'm giving you 30 days. Hey, tell me something. How are you going to raise 20 grand in 30 days? Well, I, uh, I got a horse in mind. Yes, I'm thinking of buying a racehorse. Good luck, Sully. Come on, babe. You heard him. 30 days. Yeah, I heard him. But, boss, where are you going to raise 20,000 bucks? That's what Baxter wanted to know. I don't know, Smitty, but we're starting with my cufflinks. Get him back to the hawk shop. Again? Well, they'll bring enough to buy the horse. Horse? What horse? The Merfax horse, Whipper. Oh, boss, I told you a dozen times. Whipper's great, but there ain't a jockey living that can stay on his back. He's a man-eater. Well, that's why we can buy him so cheap. As for a jockey, I think maybe Johnny Cates, our boy. Have you blown your topper? A horse nobody can ride and a jockey that's been barred from every track in the country? Well, that's the best I can do with the tools I've got. Well, promise me one thing. That you won't buy this horse until you find out whether this little rook, uh, crook can ride him or not. <laughs> okay, got any ideas where Johnny Cates might be right now? Yeah, Tijuana. All right, then get going with these cufflinks. We're on our way. Here he is, Salty. Here's the little punk. Ah, get your big mitts off me before. Oh, a copper, huh? No, I'm no copper. Then what's the idea of going around scaring people? I found him inside there, boss. Him and a couple of blondes playing the slot machines for nickels. Johnny, my name's Salty O'Rourke. What do you want? What's that you eat? Chew on tobacco. Any objections? Plenty. Then give me a cigar. I don't have a cigar. Then shut up. Now, do you boys mind if I get in on this elevating discussion? I asked you what it's all about, didn't I? How would you like to be a jockey again, Johnny? Come again? My jockey and my partner. I'm the owner, Smitty, here's the trainer, and you do the booting. We work together, live together, and win the Dellington Handicap together. 50,000 bucks. Roll over, mister. To win a race like that, it takes a pretty fast pig. Oh, I got the pig. All I need is the boy. Well, what's the hitch? He wouldn't be coming to me if you oh, was on the... Oh, it's this horse we got. He eats jockeys. If you can't ride him, it's no deal. The Beatles don't live what I can't ride. But uh, they won't let me near a track in the state, see? Some beef about a crooked race. I was innocent as a baby. Oh, never mind that. I can get your license. You've, uh, you've got a brother, haven't you? Yeah. 
Back in Brooklyn. Yeah, and he's 17 years old, named Timothy. A regular information bureau. Mm -hmm. And you're 21. <laughs> you're wrong. 22. Well, there's nothing to it. All you do is write for Timothy's birth certificate, and that's that. Say, you're a pretty cagey citizen, huh? Okay. Where's this pig I can't ride? I uh, got him at a ranch near San Diego. We'll take a look at him tonight. That, uh, that right, Smitty? That's right. Say around 11.30. What do you mean, 11.30? Don't worry, kid. He don't mind running in the dark. I don't get this at all. Okay, Smitty, I, I guess the boy wants out. Oh, uh, relax, will you? What have I got to lose? Well, that's better. Oh, uh, Smitty, you want to make a phone call, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I better. Sure you want to go through with this, boss? No, stop being so chicken. What'd the watchman say? Just like he said when I found him. Oh, I guess everything is okay. I gave him ten bucks and he disappeared. Still in all, stop I think... Stop worrying, will you? The brawl saddled? He's saddled. Only I think hey, that... Hey, what a layout. Why didn't you tell me this here's the Crestview stable? Will you pipe down? Huh? What's the matter? Shut up. What's everybody whispering for? Oh, uh, we just don't want to wake up the other horses, kid. Huh? Oh, oh. Well, this is Whipper. Great horse. Great. Bring him around, Smitty. What am I trying to do? You get over there, you thick-headed beetle. Come on now. Yep now. Yep. Watch it, Smitty. You're making him dizzy. Well, what do you think he's doing to me? Get down there. Back. Back, you fool. Back. What's uh, him and the horse supposed to be doing? Oh, uh, oh, Smitty, just, just playing. He loves horses. Uh, all right, kid. Come on. Take him. Give me a shovel, Rourke. All right. Watch it, Smitty. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just take a couple of turns on the practice track there. I, uh, I want to see how you handle it. And remember, this nag's got a mind of his own. I'm the guy that's going to change it. Let him go. All right, Whipper. Come on, get out your bag of tricks. Come on, come on. Toss me, why don't you? Go on, go on. Kick, kick him. Still on, ain't I? <laughs> You're tough, eh? Well, I'm tough, too. Come on, get over here and run. Come on, now. Let's go. This way, I said. This way. Yeah. Look at that bang tail go. And that kid. Look at him. Look at him. All right, bring him in, kid. Bring him in. Well, how did you do it? That horse is a man killer. I just talked to him, man to man. You, you talked to him? Yeah. He says everything's going to be okay. Well, what do you know? A talking horse. Okay, Smitty, take him back to his stall. We'll stop by later and buy him. Buy him? Don't you already own this nag? I had to see if you could ride him, didn't I? Holy cow, let's get out of here. Well, how do you like the bungalow, kid? Yeah, no complaints. Well, this is home, sweet home, till after the Dellington handicap. You mean it's our, ours, boss? Yeah, I just saw the real estate man downtown. Oh, uh, Johnny, I stopped by the track, too. I saw the racing secretary. I uh, thought we settled all that yesterday. Oh, everything's okay. There's just a little matter of uh, going to school. Going to where? School. That uh, birth certificate says you're 17, and the state law says you gotta go till you're 18. Oh, they're wasting their time. The horses I ride don't read nor write. They got a schoolhouse right at the track. All underage jockeys go there. So if you want to ride, that's where you're going. I got all the education I need, and I ain't gonna overdo it. Now, look. It's three weeks before the handicap. Are you gonna kick aside a bundle of Joe just because you don't want to go to school? I ain't gone. Okay. Okay, toss it in the gutter. One third of 50 grand. Over 16,000 bucks. Yeah, think it over, stupid. Well, come on, Smitty, let's go get dinner. What about me? Well, it's up to you. Um, okay, okay, I'll case the joint in the morning. If I like it, maybe I'll try it for a couple of days. Well, that's better. Here you are, Junior, have a cigar. Open break between France and England in 1700 and... Come in. Yes, young man? Uh, where can I find a dame that runs this brain coop? <laughs> I'm Miss Brooks, and if you don't mind, I'm not a dame. Oh, a good-looking babe like you, the teacher? What did you want to see me for? Oh, you asked me that a minute ago, and I'd have been stuck, but uh, now I can think of a lot of things. <laughs> That's enough of your impudence. What do you want? Oh, it ain't what I want, sister. I'm Timothy Kate, and they hung a school wrap on me. How old are you? Uh, 
17, but uh, that don't cramp my style, baby. <laughs> Sit down. And just for that last remark, I'm keeping you after school. Well, what do you think I'm angling for, Toots? <laughs> that settles it. Get out. Oh, don't get sore, sister. Get out. You're expelled. Oh, what do you know? A new track record. In and out of school in two minutes. So long, fellas. <laughs> I still don't understand what you're beefing about, boss. You don't understand. I send you out to buy a whip and you come back with two horses. But I told you, they give me raillery here for nothing. You didn't have to take him, did you? He'll eat more than a whipper. All you gotta do is drop him in a cheap race. How about Friday? Some sucker will claim him and you'll make a quick profit. All right, all right. Tell Mac to stop walking him. He's liable to get all out of breath. If he don't keep moving, he'll sit down. Hey, Mac! That's enough of railery. Put him next to Whipper. Sure, Smitty. Uh-oh, now look. Huh? The kid. Hey, you, why aren't you in school? I've been looking for you. They sprung me. Sprung you? Yeah. She don't want me, the teacher. You'd think I was rat poison. Why doesn't she want you? I don't know. That's what I get for acting like a gentleman instead of being myself. Can't you get it through your thick skull that you've got to go to school? Well, no steep school teacher's gonna blow our chances. All right, what's her name? Miss uh, Snooks or something. Well, uh, whatever her name is, she's gonna get my number one pitch in quick. Find out when school's out, Smitty. You and I are calling on a teacher. Come in. Oh, uh, pardon me. I must have made a mistake. I'm looking for Miss Snooks. I'm the only teacher here. My name is Brooks. Uh, oh. Then you're the one who expelled Timothy Kate. Yes, I did. Are you his father? Uh oh. <laughs> no, but uh, Smitty here, I mean, Mr. Smith, he's uh, Timothy's godfather. You sure you're the teacher we're looking for? Yes, why? Uh, oh, nothing except from the way Timothy spoke. You expected a spinster? Well, no, not exactly. Just what Tim did Timothy do that made you throw him out? He was insolent, impudent, and disrupted my entire class. Oh, Miss Brooks, I'd hate to see you make a mistake that might be on your conscience the rest of your life. Mistake? Yes. Right now, this boy's on his way up. He's supporting an invalid mother and two little sisters. One of them works at a church. If you make a wrong decision at this point, well, you're liable to ruin his entire life. Well, I'm supporting a mother, too. What's going to happen to her if the board discharges me for inefficiency? Well, you see, Mr. Smith, the old law of self-preservation, no matter who else it hurts. I... I wish you wouldn't put it that way. You know, it's a funny thing, Miss Brooks, but 20 years ago, a school teacher just like you had to make a decision. And if she hadn't made the right one, well, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. Well, maybe I should make some concession. Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. I'll see that he's here the first thing in the morning. Well, I didn't say he could come back. I'll think it over. Why can't you think it over now? I'm sorry. That's my decision. Oh, certainly. Well, thank you very much for your time. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Good afternoon. A beautiful doll like that. And what a disposition. I'm not through yet. Huh? I'm making another pitch tonight. I got her address off that letter on her desk, and she made a crack about uh, having a mother, didn't she? What more do I need? That's a stubborn tomato, Salty. Even you can't... Stick do... to the horses, Smitty. I'll handle the dance. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Surprised to see me? Well, I... Won't you come in? I've only a minute. I'm afraid I must have seemed terribly insistent this morning. Besides, I... I took up a lot of your time and... Well, here's just a little trinket. A present? For me? Well, no, you see, it's a sewing basket. I saw it in the window and it looks so much like the one my dear mother used to have that I... Well, I thought your mother might like to have it. Well, that's very sweet of you. Mother? Yes, dear? I'd like you to meet Mr. O'Rourke. He has a present for you. A present for me? Why, how do you do, young man? How do you do? That's really nothing. Oh. oh, it's just beautiful. How many men would think of such a thoughtful present as a sewing basket? Oh, well, thank you very much. My friends consider me very old-fashioned. Oh, well, uh, Mr. O'Rourke is in the horse racing business, aren't you? Oh, it's, it's really just a hobby. My chief interest right now is life insurance. Tell me, uh, when you're at the racetrack, do you ever bet? Oh, well, that comes pretty close to gambling, Mrs. Brooks. No, my big thrill is trying to win the first prize. How many horses do you have, Mr. O'Rourke? 
Oh, just a couple at the moment. One of them's going on Friday. He is? Going where? Oh, well, what I meant to say, he's racing on Friday. Oh. How would you like to come out and be my guest? You mean... Oh. Oh, oh! I'm afraid we couldn't. Nonsense, Mother. It will do us good to get out. Mr. O'Rourke, we, we accept with thanks. Well, splendid. I'll call for you at... Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't a horse running on Friday. Oh, who? No, I just remembered my jockey got in trouble at school today. He won't be eligible. At school? What Barbara can take care of that? Well, no, I'm not so sure. <laughs> you win, Mr. O'Rourke. We'll give Timothy another chance. Oh, you don't know how happy you're making that boy. Well, I'm probably keeping you people up late. Why do you know it's 9.30? Oh, sometimes we stay up much later. Well, you... You'll probably think I'm just an old stick in the mud, but we horsemen like to keep respectable hours. I'll get your hat. Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. And thank you so much for my beautiful presents. Uh, good night, Mr. O'Rourke. Till Friday, then. Good night, Mother. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of Salty O'Rourke, starring Alan Ladd, Marjorie Reynolds, and William Demarest. Mr. William Keeley returns to the microphone. Our curtain rises on Act Two of Salty O'Rourke, starring Alan Ladd in the title role, William Demarest as Smitty, and Marjorie Reynolds as Barbara Brooks, with James Cardwell as Johnny Kate. It's a few minutes later. Johnny Kate, the jockey, is lying in bed, lazily blowing smoke rings at the ceiling. A strange and beautiful smile is on his face as Salty O'Rourke comes in. Hi, O'Rourke. Hey, don't you know that's dangerous, smoking cigars in bed? Oh, it helps me think. What about? Oh, nothing. Smitty just tells me we got railery set for the eighth race on Friday. Yeah. And, uh... I just got you set with Miss Brooks. Now, no arguments, do you hear? You go back to school in the morning. Hey, that's great. That's swell. You, uh, you like the idea? Oh, certainly. Oh, just full of surprises, aren't you, Sonny Boy? Uh, say, uh, how's chances of making a light touch, Salty? Say, uh, half a seat? Fifty bucks. Well, I like to go out once in a while and look at something else besides a horse's neck. Well, what'll you settle for? Uh, fifteen hoolies. Here's ten. Are you sure you can spare it? Now get yourself some sleep. Well, just don't let me oversleep, you hear? They go to the post at that school at 8.30, and I ain't going to be late. Hey, Smitty, you better call a vet. I think the kid here's got a fever. All right, boys. 45 minutes for outdoor recreation. Class dismissed. Oh, hey, boy. Hey, hey, come on, Kate. We're going to play ball. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? All you guys. Hey, come here. Come here. Why? Hey, Look. Here we are, out in the nice sunshine, and there she is, cooped up inside. Miss Brooks, well, what do you working want? for us. Well, that's well, 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 do we do anything for her? Do we? I don't get it. Do we ever give Miss Brooks anything to show we appreciate it? Oh, what does she want? Well, she could use a lot of things. She ever got a load of that dress she wears. Oh, brother. Well, think how she feels. She wants to look nice. But how can she on a school teacher's grab? Maybe we could take up a collection. Charity? No, ah, no. Nah. I got a better idea, if uh, you guys are willing. Yeah, of course. Sure. Well, I'll buy you a ticket on that horse I'm riding this afternoon, see? On railway. You ought to be about uh, 15 to 1. 15 to 1? Uh, that goat? Well, uh, maybe a little more than that. And where do we come in? Well, uh, you guys who are riding against me. All you got to do is give me a little head start coming out of the gate, see? And everybody ride like heck and try to catch me. You know, nothing crooked. And uh, it's all for Miss Brooks. Now, what do you say? Oh, sure. Gee, that's swell, fellas. You make me very happy. Oh, glad to do it. Now, listen to me, Johnny. When you get this dog on the track, just walk him to the gate. He's got to save his strength. Okay, Smitty. He hasn't got a chance of making him look good. He's not claim we don't eat. I wouldn't say he ain't got a chance. He felt like man of war when I worked him out. Yeah? Well, don't break out in front or somebody's liable to run over you. I'm telling you, you better have a chunk on them. Come on, Railway. We'll show them. Where are you going to watch, Salty? Uh, up in the box. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The school teacher and her old lady. Have fun, boss. Here's third by two lengths. Oscar is off 
Miss O'Rourke, look, he's still out in front, rattling. And you wouldn't let me take a chance well, on This him. is uh, most unexpected, Mother. Nicholas, this is railway by seven lengths. Oh, Lays down in no. second by police water double lengths. Uh, oh, whether you like it or not, Mr. O'Rourke, I'm going to buy a chance on raillery right now. No, it's, it's too late. You can't. And neither can I. Come on, Neil. Just don't look back. You see how far in front you are? You'll drop dead. Come on, Grandpa. Come on. They're coming down to the line of now, and railery wins by a four length. Right on the You think you can make it back to the winner's circle? Come on, Grandpa. O'Rourke, it's all lit up with numbers. Now, what could that mean? Murder. What? Railery, $122 to win. And 40 cents. Oh, no. I've got a surprise for you. Look. It's a $5 ticket. On Railery's nose. When did you buy that? I didn't buy it. It came with this note. Here, read it. Dear teacher, if this horse wins, you can buy yourself a new dress. Your loving students. Doesn't that look like Timothy's handwriting to you? Oh, oh well... It couldn't be. He knows better than to do a thing like that. Oh, let's go and redeem it. I have a better idea. I'll return it to the boys and let them cash it in for the athletic fund. Why, that's lovely, dear. Oh, well, I, I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. You're liable to get the boys in trouble. Well, they didn't do anything dishonest. Oh, no, but the school board might think they did, and that's just as bad. Hey, boss. Hey, boss, i got to see you. Oh, uh, excuse me a minute, lady. Did you see what I saw? Oh, it's worse than that, Smitty. That punk bought a ticket to the school teacher, and she's going to turn the money over to the athletic fund. We'll be barred for life. Not if I can get her to spend some of that dough. She'll be a partner, and then, then she can't squawk. Get on it, boss. Get on it fast. Where are we going now, Salty? I'm driving you home. Your mother might be worried. Oh, it's a wonderful night, and it's been such a wonderful day. Forget it. The races, dinner, drive in the country. And that new dress you bought. The dress. Why did you do it? Do what? Well, I wasn't going to buy the dress. It was much too expensive. 1975, too expensive. Salty, I saw you pay the sales lady the difference. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did you do that? Because it was the dress you liked. Because I wanted you to have it. Are you, uh, you going to take it back? No, I, I should, but I'm not. Well, you had one good idea anyway about giving the boys a party at the end of the term with the rest of my winnings. Oh, sure. They'd like that better than turning it over for athletics. You know, you're a strange person. Me? Strange? Yes. Why should a man like you be carrying a gun? What's that? Why do you carry a gun? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting careless. I, I didn't think it was noticeable. Salty, I... I'd like to go home right away. That's where I said I was taking you. All right, Johnny, you're wise. I'm gonna wake up. Huh? Who? Oh, you talking to me? And start explaining. Oh, you ain't sure because I won this afternoon. Can I help it if some crooked jockey shoo me in? And let that dough alone. You no good lying little crook. I gotta live, don't I? Besides, I told you to bet on him. So you could pull a fix that could have tossed the handicap and 50 G's right out of the window. Except I wasn't caught, was I? Now, you don't know how close you came. That school teacher friend of yours was going to give the winnings from the ticket you sent her to the athletic fund. So what happened? So I stopped her. Oh, I bet that was hard. I never seen a dame yet that couldn't use a little extra... That's even you guys. The neighbors can hear you all over the block. All right, listen to me, punk. From now on, you're going to give me an honest shake and start training. And if you don't, I'm getting me a new boy. Ah, uh, no, you're not. Yeah, who says so? The talking horse says so. Whipper. The horse nobody else can ride, remember? So why don't you two get out of here? I've got to get my rest. Good night, boys. Come on, Smitty. You're not going to let that saddle monkey take charge, are you? There's two ways to kill a cat, Smitty. You can hit him over the head or you can feed him chloroform that tastes like cream. In this case, I'm using cream. Well, Timothy, I suppose you realize why I'm keeping you after school. Well, sure, Miss Brooks, but uh, I only whistled because you look so pretty in your new dress. Timothy, why is it you do a nice thing one minute and spoil it the next by being so ill-behaved? What did I do nice? With this dress. It, it was very sweet of you. But you must promise never to do it again. Oh, it was nothing. You don't even have to mention it. I know there's a lot of good in you, and I do want to see you amount to something. Say, are you on the level? Of course I am. 
I like you. I want to help you. If you'll let me. If I'll let you. Oh, listen, Cupcake. You and me are going to make beautiful music together. How dare you say such things to me? Huh? Well, I did You was... get out of here, and if you ever say anything like that again, I'll expel you for good. But, Miss Brooks, I... Get I'm... out! Here he is, Sophie. I told you we'd find the kid in a joint like this. Beat it. So this is where you've been all night, drinking beer. Button it up. All right, take it easy, Smitty. Maybe the boy's got something on his mind. Maybe I have. Not that Model T school teacher again. Don't you talk about her like that. She's swell. Now, wait a minute. You're not stuck on this thing, are you? What if I am? Oh, easy, kid. We're only trying to help you. Well, fix it up so Miss Brooks will talk to me again. Okay, but you've got to start doing your part. What do you mean? Well, in the first place, a fine girl like Miss Brooks doesn't go for guys like us. She goes for guys that, that drink milk, not beer. Go on. Well, in the second place, you've got to train every day. Treat her with respect. Prove to her that you've got a fine, clean-cut character. Then on the far turn, you start making your move, see? That's the Dellington handicap. The girl and 16 grand in your pocket. A winner. He's right, kid. Uh, I would have thought of it. Go get her on the phone and talk to her. Oh, sure. Sure, partner. The number's Dellington, 727. There's a phone back there. Well, what did she say? I uh, told her I had something important to discuss. She says I can come right over. Okay. Just remember whose side you're pitching on. I uh, have to be nice to her, don't I? Just don't be too nice. Now, how do you know how I have to be? Every time you talk to her, you get your nose in a sling. All right, Smitty, you and Johnny better get back to the bungalow. And when you get through talking to her, don't hang around her house, do you hear? You uh, got it kind of bad, haven't you, Johnny? Give you a full report when I get back. Don't worry, kid. Salty will put it over for you. He's in with her old lady, too. Even had him, had him to the races. Even picked out that dress for Miss Brooks. What? He picked it? Sure. Uh, Smitty, uh, look, uh, you want to run next door and get me a couple of stogies? It's embarrassing when they ask me my age. Here. Forget it, kid. These here will be on me. Thanks, Smitty. Hey, Herman. Yeah? When that guy comes back, tell him I just disappeared. You don't know where I went. Sure, kid. I'll tell him. <laughs> Oh, what can be keeping Barbara, Mr. O'Rourke? Well, I hope she's not getting all dressed up. I just thought we'd have a little chat. Oh, you can't fool me. This is no place to talk, and anyway, your new dress ought to be taken out. Well, Mother, the pleasure's all mine. Hello, Salty. What were you two talking about? Oh, Salty was asking me if he could take you out, and I said he could. Oh, Mother, you did. Well, I think it's a very good idea. Now, you two run along. Don't worry about me, dear. Run along. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mom. Hello? Hello, Miss Brooks? This is Mrs. Brooks. I'm sorry, but Miss Brooks is out for the evening. Oh, say, uh, Mr. Roy ain't around then either, huh? Oh, no. He and my daughter went out for the evening. So who's calling, please? Never mind. Is there any message? Yeah. He's a dirty double cross oh, and chiseler. Ma. And if he starts looking for his boy, tell him not to bother. Tell him I'm getting cockeyed drunk. Goodbye. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll bring you the third act of Salty O'Rourke, starring Alan Ladd, Marjorie Reynolds, and William Demarest. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. We continue with act three of Salty O'Rourke, starring Alan Ladd as the gentleman in question, William Demarest as Smitty, and Marjorie Reynolds as Barbara Brooks, with James Cardwell as Johnny Cates. Johnny Kate is sure that double, Salty has double-crossed him with the beautiful Miss Brooks. And while he's drowning his sorrow the only way he knows how, Salty's taken Barbara to a nightclub. True to his promise to Johnny, Salty builds him up to stratospheric heights. Well, you see, Barbara, he's really a wonderful boy. Loyal, ambitious, clean-cut. And what do you suggest I do about it? 
Well, you could invite him over to your house, get to know him better. But Timothy seems so, well, precocious. Yeah, he, he is old for his years. But underneath, he's just a sweet, lovable kid. All right, I'll invite him over. Now, do you suppose you'd consider asking me to dance? Oh, hello, Rort. Oh, Baxter. What do you want? I thought you'd be glad to see me. You see, I heard about a long shot that came in, 60 to 1. Sorry, I didn't bet the race. You didn't bet the race? That's right. Okay, but the mortgage is still due. And payable, after the handicap. You seem pretty sure of winning. Sure, I've got the right horse. I hope so, Sully. Yeah, look me up again sometime. Sorry, Barbara. You're in trouble. That's why you carry the gun. Who was that man? Let's uh, talk about it some other time, huh? Oh, Sully, won't you please quit this life you're leading? Why? What's it to you? You're right. What's it to me? Come on, let's get out of here. In bed yet? I uh, I didn't turn in because uh, the kid asleep. Well, that's what I've been waiting up to tell you. He uh, uh, he gave me the slip, boss. Gave you the slip? What do you use for brains? I knew you was going to ask me that. <laughs> well, all we can do is. <laughs> is that uh, all you've got to say? <laughs> oh, that's great. Tomorrow's Saturday. You know Whipper's running that prep race, and look at the shape you're in. You're drunk, and jockeys that drink... You shut up. Look at this, Rourke. You got a layoff of Miss Brooks. Oh, why don't you get smart? I was only trying to straighten you out with her. Ah, give me that. I never looked sideways at her in my life. You better not look at her again, brother, because I got you right in my pocket, see? I'm the only booter that can ride with her. I can ride him with the reins in my teeth, see? And you shut up. I didn't say anything. Oh, you might. But make one false move with that girl, O'Rourke, and you and that nag wind up in the glue factory. It's for you. Yeah? Bring me some ice. My head's killing me. I'll bring you some ant paste. Get him the ice. Go on. I told you we got to use cream on this cat. It still holds. Come on, Johnny. Wake up. Atta a boy, atta a boy. How do you feel? Get out of here. Did you have a good night, kid? What's the matter with you guys? Why, not a thing. Now, if you can stand some good news, I just call Miss Brooks. She said she'd be very happy to see you at her house after you worked out with her. She did? You sure you're on the level? Well, I've always been on the level with you. Oh, boy. Thanks, Sully. Give me my clothes. I'm getting up. Oh, my head. Now that you're here, Timothy, let's review your geography. Yeah, 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 later. Uh, Miss uh, Brooks. Yes? I uh, got you a little something. Here, in this box. It's a pin. Timothy, it's beautiful. Oh, but you shouldn't spend your money like that. You have your future to think about. I have thought of it. It only upsets me. Why? Someday a girl will come along and you'll be thinking of settling down, having your own home. You should start saving right now. You think so? Well, Certainly. You mean if I had, say, uh, 15 grand in a bank, a girl might take a chance with me? Exactly. And I'm a little old-fashioned, Timothy. I believe in early marriage. Oh, you don't have to say any more, baby. I'm uh, way out in front of you. You have a funny look in your eye, Timothy. Is there someone? I ain't cracking now, but uh, when I do, you'll be the first to know about it. Uh, say, uh, there's a prep race for the handicap this afternoon. Uh, me and Whipper's running. Now, Timothy, don't you dare... Oh, no, no, I was uh, just going to say when... We come down that finish line, we'll be thinking about you, me and Whipper. You're very sweet, Tim. He did it, boss. He did it. Oh, what a horse. Beat everything by a city block. Oh, what a jockey. Now, if I'm going to keep that kid in the right frame of mind for one more week, we've got a beautiful chance of hitting that jackpot. I got an idea. Look, the night before the handicap is the jockey's ball. All them punks in school will be trying to take the teacher, see? Now, if you could muscle Johnny into that spot, we'd have a happy character in our hands. How about it? Hey, wait a minute. I think you got something. Hustle down to the winner's circle, Smitty. I'm seeing this book right away. Look at him waltzing, boss. But once that Johnny is teaching teacher something, you know, I can't get over the way that kid's been behaving. I'm beginning to believe he's all right. I was even thinking the same thing. Hey, 
they stop dancing. Well, do you blame him? Look, he's taking her outside, boss. Out in the moonlight. Why, that two-bit little Romeo? Oh, oh, now, easy, boss, easy. That's what we wanted, wasn't it? Oh, well, what's the matter with me? Certainly it's what we want. All right, Timmy. Now, what is it you wanted to talk about that we couldn't talk about inside? Well, uh, first off, uh, have you noticed any change in me, Miss Brooks? Yes, and I'm very proud of you. Oh, am I glad to hear you say that. It sure makes it easier for me to talk about us, knowing for sure how you feel. About us? Yeah, I, uh, been to the jewelry store again. You know what it is this time? I haven't any idea. Here, an engagement ring. Timothy! Oh, oh, oh don't stop me now. I, I, I love you, and, and I'm gonna say it. I, I, I wanna marry you. Oh, heck, I, I know this is a rotten Timothy, proposal, you're but... not serious. Serious? Oh, Timothy, I like you very much, but if I've given you the impression that my feelings went any uh, deeper... When you said about me meeting the right girl and saving my dough and getting married, you, you didn't mean us? I meant you. Oh, I had no idea is you'd Is there somebody else? That doesn't make any difference. There is somebody else. It's a Rorick, ain't it? Ain't it? Well, what if it is? I knew it. What a lot of fun you must have had laughing at me, the both of you. No one's been laughing at you. Oh, no? Well, we'll see who's going to laugh last. Boy, what a sucker I've been. What is it? What's wrong? Come out here on the terrace. You're the most contemptible man that ever lived. Oh, now, wait a minute. That trick you played on Timothy was the most heartless. How could you do such an unholy thing and make me a partner to it? Will you please tell me what you're talking about? Timothy proposed to me just now, and it's all your fault. Where is he? He's gone. He couldn't stand it when I told him I... When you told him what? Never mind. You must have told him something to drive him away. Well, I guess I did, but I can't tell it to you. You've got to tell me. Everything may depend on it. I told him I was in love with you. Oh, what in the world did you tell him that for? Because I am. Well, at least I was. Now go away and let me alone. Go away. <laughs> See you. Says he's a Rock's jockey. Send him in, babe. Then beat it. Okay. Go right in, kid. I ain't got much time, Baxter, and I know all about you. Smart kid. What can I do for you? Nothing. I come to your hotel to tell you what I can do for you. You'd like to have Whipper in your pocket tomorrow, wouldn't you? Sure I would. But a job like that's worth more dough than I can afford. Well, this time money don't count. I don't like O'Rourke any more than you do. Is that so? Yeah. What horse are you on? Black armor. I got quite a little sack on black armor. We'll put 500 on his nose for me and we got a deal. Oh, I can do a little better than that. A grand on his nose and, uh, here, say five C's for spending money. Okay. Uh, there's just one thing I don't understand. Uh, O'Rourke owes you dough. 20,000 bucks. And how you gonna collect it if the uh, whipper don't win? Who cares? If Black Armor wins, and now I'm pretty sure he's going to, I'll make more off my bets. And at the same time, wipe out a guy I don't like. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I see what you mean. Buddy, look, the kid's home. He's probably been home all the time. Hello, Johnny. Hiya, kid. Boy, are we dumb. We've been checking every saloon in town. We figured you've been hanging one on again. I got a ride tomorrow, ain't I? Johnny, you're okay. As for what happened tonight at the dance, well, all I can say is I'm sorry. Ah, cut out the malarkey. You're just a dirty double-crossing buzzard. Oh, now, take it easy, kid. She didn't mean a thing to you, huh? Never looked at her sideways, huh? And all the time you're playing me for a patsy. Uh, I never had an honest shake with you or her. Now, listen to me and get this straight. That girl didn't mean a thing to me, just like I told you. As a matter of fact, until she bowled me out a couple of hours ago, I didn't even know she was alive. But, brother, I know it now. Kind of a slow thinker, ain't you? <laughs> All I can do is tell you again I'm sorry. And if I were you, I'd concentrate on that 16 grand you're going to pick up tomorrow afternoon. Because, girl or no girl, you're still a pretty smart businessman. Uh, you're sure counting on me, ain't you? Yes, because I'll have the best horse and the best booter on the track. Maybe you're right. Do you think he's right, Smitty? Well, kid, I'll tell uh, you what... It... Skip it. I'm going to bed. Hey, 
Hey, Mac. Yes, Holdy. Start looking for Smitty. Horse in the paddock, and my trainer hasn't even shown up. How am I going to find him in that mob? Oh, it's okay, Holdy. Smitty's coming. Hey, boss, boss. Where have you been? We're cooks, Holdy. Cooked. What? Baxter's got Whipper in the sack, and you with him. Johnny sold out to Baxter, the little thief. Oh, quit running off at the mouth. How do you know? I got a friend, a bellhop, see? He seen them together last night in Baxter's hotel. He heard them. I don't believe it. Baxter's giving them 1500 bucks. That little gyp's got no loyalty Stop shaking, for... use your head. Aren't we giving him a third of the purse? Where's the kid now? Still in the jockey room. They'll be weighing in about now. Yeah, he ought to be out any minute. There ain't any time to lose. Now where are you going? Stay with Whipper, boss. There's somebody in the grandstand. They gotta see. I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Brooks. You remember me? Yes. It's about Salty, Miss. If he loses this race, you'll never see him again, and neither will anybody else. What are you talking about? The kid's throwing the race. He's not going to try to win. And if we don't win, Salty is as good as dead. Why do you come to me? Because Salty is in love with you. In love with me? Oh, please, lady. You've got to believe me. The kid's coming out for the race. I want you should talk to him. Where will I find him? Well, after he leaves the jockey room, he goes to the paddy. I think maybe there's a spot between where you can grab him. <laughs> But I can't stop now. I'm riding in this race. If it's the last thing I do, I've got to make you listen, Timothy. What's the matter with you? I can't guarantee a winner. Timmy, you said once you wanted me to be happy. Now you've got your chance to prove it. I love Salty. I always will. And if he wins this race, I can get him out of all this forever. But it's up to you, Tim. You will give me that chance, won't you? I'll always remember the nice things you told me last night. And I'll always be grateful and proud of you. And no matter what happens on that track, I, for one, will always know that you tried to win with all your might. Hey, hey, you kissed me. Yes, Timmy, I wanted to kiss you. Uh, excuse me, I, I, I got to see a horse about a race. All right, kid, we're as tight as a drum. Just remember, it's a mile and a quarter, and, and... What am I doing trying to tell you how to ride this horse? You're the only one that does know how. Yeah. You been hearing some talk, Sorty? A little, but I don't believe it. You'll know soon, though, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'll know soon. Good luck, partner. Okay, Whipper. Let's go. That dirty little crook. Take it easy, Smitty. Maybe he's changed his mind. Yeah? Look, I've just been doing some snooping in the jockey room. Here, in the kid's locker. 500 cash. Baxter gave him this, Salty, and he's riding you straight to the undertaker. It's too late to worry about it. No. Yank Whipper out the race. Declare him out. Now, what good would that do? If we can't win with him, we can't win without him. Then let's blow out of here while we can. Okay, get the car. I'll meet you in front of the gate. Okay, boss. I got the car. Let's go. I, uh, I changed my mind. I think I'll just sit here on the bench for a while. You nuts? Yeah, probably. I'll get over to the bungalow and start packing. Sure, go ahead. I'll see you in a little while. Hello, Salty. Hello, Brooksy. I followed you out here. I saw you leave. You're not going to watch the race? Oh, so they're in the starting No. Case. You never called me Brooksy before. They're all in there. And there I never they felt know. this way before. I'm in love, Brooksy. Funny, but it's so. I'm, I'm in love, too, Salty. Yeah, but I'm just a guy who found out too late. Why? And Tell me, I've a right to know. Long story, Brooksy, one that just That's didn't work out. If I'd have won this race, the whole world would have looked different, but... But you haven't lost yet. Whipper may still win him. No, oh, no, he's in a boat ride, not a chance. Salty, I know about Timothy, but we mustn't judge him too soon. We mustn't. Brooksy, I'm no good with words unless I'm lying to somebody. But I'm not lying now. I want you to start walking to that gate and go right on through without looking back. This is goodbye. No, it isn't, Salty. Because where you go, I'll go too. No, you can't. Someday, when things straighten themselves out, I'll come back. But not until then. I'd like to kiss you goodbye, Brooks. Will you let me? Oh. Oh. You have no right to talk to me before the race, did you, Whipper? You've got good horse sense. With me, what would you do? You couldn't help it if you run away and won this race, could you? What made you think you can? 
Oh, I tried to get the day. Pretty far back. They look like standing. All right, up, back, up, race, boss, my legs. Gotta get these first, don't he? All right, Lipper, come on, boy. Hit him, boy. Come on. All right, Tom, second time. Last day of those Whipper. Whipper is now in third place. It's Black Tom by this third season Whipper. They're coming down the stretch now. It's Black Tom by one leg. Where'd he go? Where's Timmy the Kate? Haven't any of you seen him? Uh, sure, Mr. O'Rourke. Timmy just beat it. He what? Yeah, just now. He sure seemed in a hurry. Say, Doc Baxter's been looking for him, too. Baxter. If you hurry, Salty, hit it out that way where all those cars are parked. Thanks, Max. He knows we're after him, Doc. The little rat, he'll find a car with keys in it and lay him out of here. There he goes now. Uh, where? Ducking that Packard. I just saw him. You come around the other side, babe. I'll come up this okay. way. Okay. What's your hurry, kid? You're not going anywhere. Oh, hello, hello, Doc. That, that whip is sure surprised us, Cindy. <laughs> Donnie! Donnie! It's a Rourke. That's a break for you, kid. Sorry! This way, i got to give it to you fast. Sorry! We won. Tell her, Bonnie. Easy. Easy. Tell her, Bonnie, we... They carried him into the ambulance. He was dead, Sully. Dead. Murdered. Where are you going? I'm dropping you off at your house. And I've got a debt to clear up. You're going after those men. You're going to take revenge and there'll be more killing. You're nervous and excited. Better lie down when you get home. You, you'll be back for me? Yeah, I'll be back for you. Don't worry, I'll be back. Come on in, O'Rourke. I've been waiting for you. A little late, aren't you? Yeah, there was an accident at the track, Baxter. I was delayed. Oh? What happened? My jockey's dead. Somebody murdered him. You're sure you don't know anything about it? Why should I know anything about it? It's too bad he ran a good race. Yes, he did. For me. All right, let's cut the chatter. You owe me 20 grand. Yeah. Yeah, it's here. In this envelope. Thanks. Not going to count it? Uh-uh. You see, if I was to count it, O'Rourke, you might start reaching for a gun. Well, except I, I don't have a gun. No? No, your pal Babe was waiting for me when I stepped out of the elevator. Oh. Yeah, stuck a cannon in my back and uh, searched me. That Babe just hasn't got any manners. No, and neither have I. Let him have it, Babe. Let him have it. Sorry, Baxter, but Babe's detained. Will we do? Cops. Well, that's right, Doc. Get his gun, Jensen. Yeah. It's a 38, all right. A 38, huh? Three slugs from a 38 killed that kid this afternoon. Oh, uh, you, you couldn't spare me a couple of minutes alone with this rat, could you? No, we couldn't. I didn't think so. But we might spare you a couple of minutes at the curb. Uh, there's a dame down there, O'Rourke, sitting in your car, waiting. Oh, so this was your idea, huh? Sending for the cops. Oh, I had to, Salty. You might have been killed. Don't you understand? All I understand is some things are meant to be settled just one way. No one knew that better than Timothy. That's why he won that race for you this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean, Brooksy. But you're right. Some things are meant to be settled just one way. Hey. Hmm? Um... Would you mind trying that kiss again? Just the size? Well? Oh, boy, let's get out of here, teacher. I've got to catch up my homework. Before our stars return to their curtain call, here's an important reminder. Mr. William Keeley returns to the microphone. We leave Salty O'Rourke to catch up on his homework and bring our stars back to the footlights as they are in real life. 
Alan Ladd, Bill Demarest, and Marjorie Reynolds, who gave us such splendid performances. Well, thank you, Bill, but, you know, we had a good audience. That always makes a difference. Well, it just goes to show the drawing power of a salty O'Rourke. Incidentally, Alan, I understand your native state made you an Arkansas traveler in honor of your work in Salty. Well, uh, that was before they saw the picture, sir. Now, sir, they'd probably like to see me travel. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're both at Paramount, Alan, it would be fun to make a picture together. Well, I worked on one of your pictures out of Warner, sir. Now you're embarrassing me, Alan. I, I don't remember it. Don't remember Alan Ladd, Bill? <laughs> Wait till his fans hear that. <laughs> <laughs> now, just what did you do, Alan? Fell 20 feet from a scaffolding, sir, and broke my neck. <laughs> <laughs> what the kid will do to be an actor, huh? And even then, the director don't notice him. Well, what were you, a stuntman, Alan? No, nothing so exciting. Just a studio carpenter, sir. Say, what is all this sir for? Well, uh, you remember, sir, you were my commanding officer in the Air Force. <laughs> well, we can forget all about that now, Alan. Thank you, sir. Uh, or Bill. Yeah, it sounds funny. From studio grip to stardom, well, that's great work, Alan. I know Bill Demarest and Marjorie both climbed to stardom the hard way, too. Yeah, but with her looks, Marjorie had a head start. And I gotta go some to catch up with her. Yes, I see what you mean. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and all our thanks to you. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> 